Today I'm going to take another look at this, it's the E-Log01 from EP Ever, or should I say I'm going to look at what's inside this. So the E-Log is a logging accessory for EP Solar and EP Ever uh, solar charge controllers. So for instance, uh, this LS1024B has a communication port on the bottom. It's a standard RJ45 connector. So we can use a standard network cable to plug in there. And then we plug in the E-Log as well. And uh, now this can interrogate the solar charge controller. It can get all the information of the current status of that charge controller and save it for another day. Now I think the E-Log01 is quite a nice little package. Um, it connects to your solar charge controller and is powered directly from it. Uh, that is unless you decide to plug it into the mini USB port and into your computer. It then requires the CR1220 which is a bit odd um, because obviously USB has 5 volts on it as well but for some reason that's the way they've had to implement it so uh, be aware of that. But then you can still connect other accessories that you would normally connect to your solar charge controller to this side of the device. So the MT50 uh, LCD meter or just a USB cable into your computer or something like that. So uh, it doesn't stop you from using the other accessories but of course it saves all the information from your solar charge controller internally. So without any further ado let's have a look at some of the data held within. So this is the first screen capture I've done so hopefully it works um, but I've opened up the uh, log download tool here and I've connected to the e-log by the USB uh, port on here and it's uh, installed the driver and showing up as COM8 so we can open that and it comes up with device number one we can query it and it shows the first record number which is 1784 and the total record count so uh, that's uh, useful to know and if we click download it asks us where we want to save it and it saves a CSV file, a comma separated value file. Now I won't click that straight away at this moment because when I downloaded the results in the background um, it took 1 hour and 20 minutes to uh, complete the download progress and um, unfortunately that's quite a long time so uh, obviously we don't want to watch that and uh, I have tested it another time using the uh, RS485 COM port and it took the same 1 hour 20 minutes to download so clearly that's just how long it takes. And we can see that record number mentioned here in the first column and then we've got the array, current, power etc, the load, the battery, temperature, current, power, uh, state of charge if you believe those numbers, um, array status um, and the charging status, float charge, raising charge, well that's the bulk charge, um, device status, normal and if we scroll to the right hand side we can see some more historical data here, monthly energy consumed and monthly gener generated energy and uh, annual that sort of thing and at the very last column we can see the date and time and I guess there's two important things to note in this date and time column. Firstly it gets this date and time from your solar charge controller so if you've not synced it with a computer recently then that might be a little bit inaccurate um, but also the other thing to note is it uh, takes a record every 11 minutes so uh, that's fairly frequent but a lot can change in 11 minutes so uh, it's worth noting now I'm guessing it's chosen uh, EP ever have chosen 11 minutes because uh, between well, the amount of memory that's available to them in the e-log and uh, the number of records which you can have. Well look at this, we've got uh, the 31st of December here the last date and the 25th of June the first date. So yeah, that is just over six months retention. So the first thing I'm going to do here is look at the battery voltage over the last six months and straight away I can go down to this box here and see that uh, there were 18,000 nearly 800 um, measurements there. The lowest was 12.25 volts and the highest was 14.42 so 
that all looks pretty good. My battery uh, maintained an average over six months of 13.1 volts. Pretty good. Now I've scooted a bit further down the record and I found uh, the array power column for a particular day. Obviously no power was being created here uh, before this record so there's no point looking at those. So this is dawn and down at the bottom here is dusk and straight away we can uh, click on the chart button and create a, uh, a power curve I guess of the solar array which uh, as the sun rose, increased steadily. We got to 33.43 watts, and then it started uh, ramping down again, and then settled off what an average of 17, 18 uh, watts there. But um, I have a 200 watt uh, array attached to this charge controller. So uh, on a decent day, what day are we looking at? Uh, the 9th of July. Um, you would expect to probably see more than 33 watts so let's see if we can explain why that might be and straight away my attention is brought to this battery voltage column here because um, right at dawn my batteries uh, were sat at 13 volts which is well and truly charged and uh, so it didn't take the uh, solar charge controller much time to uh, get up to the um, the bulk voltage here of 14.1 and then drop down to the uh, float charge here of 13.8 so uh, it was doing its primary function it was controlling the charge it was ensuring that the batteries weren't overcharged at any point and uh, so therefore it reduced the amount of power coming in it placed those solar panels out of their most efficient um, area so uh, only bringing in that 33 watts um, was to protect the batteries. So I guess this just points out that uh, your maximum power charge controller will only create maximum power when it's got somewhere to put that energy. So I've scooted down the data here a bit further, record 20,000 and odd, and I've selected the array power again from dawn till dusk, but we'll notice straight away that there's a lot less data points, so we can assume it's a much shorter day and in fact yes this was the 24th of the 12th christmas eve apparently and um, if we look at that array power and then we can look at the battery voltage as well over that period of time and we could chart those two items together let's change that to a nice smooth line graph there and straight away we can see the array power here was under that 10 watts which i've talked about before before the uh, tracer really does mppt and then it suddenly developed to 39 37 36 so we were actually um, creating more power on this uh, mid winter's day than we were in the uh, last example which was a mid summer's day but of course we needed to create that power for longer because the battery voltage um, was lower um, first thing in the morning. And you can see that the uh, battery voltage rises up there in the bulk charge and then drops back down again um, in the float charge. And you can see the array and the controller adjusting to uh, compensate for that. So I do hope these couple of brief examples give you an idea on what you can do with the data, how you can graph it quite easily, and also how to interpret your results in front of you. Well, I think that screen capture went reasonably well. I need to do a bit of work on the audio level, so apologies for that. The E-Log01 is a useful device, I think, especially at the price that it's currently being sold at. However, you need to be aware that it does take quite a long time to download that data from it, especially when you've got six months worth, and that data is raw. Um, there's no manipulation done for you. That all has to be done manually in uh, Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. But if you're comfortable manipulating that data, well, I think it offers useful information. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.